today on Adventures in Faith with Jerry Savelle. This goes right into 2023. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. In other words, if God intended for man to have his life sustained by the seeds that he sows in Genesis chapter one, then he still had still his intention for a man to have his life sustained by the seeds that he sows today. Welcome to Adventures in Faith, everyone. I'm Jerry Savelle. Thank you for joining me today. If you were with us last week, you remember we began a brand new series entitled The Nature of a Seed. And I trust you were blessed and inspired by that lesson. And today we're going to be talking about part two. And uh, don't forget now, we're going to be talking about this for another couple of weeks uh, to come. And I don't want you to miss one session because these are so valuable. This is how you have your life sustained. It's God's way of having your life sustained while you're in the earth, sowing seed. Now, let's take a look at that from Genesis chapter 1, and let's begin reading in verse 29. Now, after God had created man, and he blessed him, and he gave dominion and authority, the next thing God did was he said this to him in verse 29. God said, Behold, I've given you every herb-bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth, every tree in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for me. So notice the next thing God did after empowering him to prosper. That's what the blessing means. It's what it means. And he gave him dominion and authority over the earth. Then the next thing he did was he gave him seed and he called it herb bearing seed. The little Hebrew calls it seeding seed. Now seeding seed is for sowing. You don't eat the seeding seed. As I mentioned yesterday, I was born on a farm in Mississippi, Vicksburg, Mississippi. And my grandfather, uh, when we would go to the field and prepare the soil and plant the seed, and then when the crops came in, uh, we had a barn where we put the crops. And my grandfather had four different bins that he put the crops in, particularly the corn, as I remember uh, mostly. And, and we, we put the best corn in the first bin, the second best corn in the second bin, the third best corn in the third bin, and then there was another bin, and I'll tell you what that was for in just a few moments. But the first bin was for the best corn, and that was the corn that we saved for sowing. I asked my grandfather one time, I said, why don't we ever eat the corn in the first bin? He said, no, that's our seeding seed. He said, if we start eating the best corn, then it's going to degenerate and then eventually won't have any good corn at all. He said, so we save the best corn for next year's sowing. So we never ate that. That was the seeding seed. All right. Then the second bin was what we fed cattle and is what we ate from the table in our home. And then the third bin was this, the corn that he took to the market to sell. And then the fourth bin was for neighbors that didn't have good crops and he would allow them to come over and get crops from that fourth bin so that they would have something for their families. So notice once again, the seeding seed, grand, my grandfather always put that in the first bin and we never ate it. We saved it for sowing for next year's crop. That's what God is saying here. I am giving you seeding seed. Now, what is seeding seed for? It's for planting. It's not for eating. Charles Capps used to say, and Charles was a farmer. When I first met Charles Capps, he was still a farmer by trade. Uh, that was his profession. He'd just begun his teaching ministry. And sometimes when I would be staying in his home, I'd go out in the field with him, ride those combines and, and watch him uh, you know, gather up the rice and so forth and, and uh, uh, whatever it was that he was growing. And... Uh, uh, Charles used to say this in his teaching sessions. He'd say, if you're down to your last dollar, don't dare spend it, sow it. That's your seeding seed. That was good advice. You know, a lot of people, they'll, they'll spend their last dollar and then complain, I don't have any money. Well, what you should have done was sow that dollar instead of spending it. That would have been your seeding seed. So notice here, God is saying to, to Adam and Eve after he created them, now, 
Here's how you're going to have your life sustained. I'm giving you seeding seed, and for you it shall be for me. Now, there are other translations that translate that word meat into provision. So what is he saying? I'm giving you seeding seed for provision. Seeding seed is for provision. In other words, what God is saying is this. This is how you're going to have your life sustained. Don't ever eat your seeding seed. Save it for sowing. And if you sow it, then you can always depend on it producing a harvest for you. And that way you'll never run out. You'll never, you'll never lack. Okay. So seeding seed is for sowing. Say that with me. Seeding seed is for sowing. You know, I I look at my tithe as a seeding seed. You know, I've been tithing ever since I've been a believer. Uh, And I know there are some folks that say that tithing is not for us today, but uh, they're too late for me. Uh, I'm going to tithe anyway. And I tithe because it works. Hallelujah. And I began tithing many, many years ago when I first came to the Lord. And and I've been tithing for 54 years. And I'm not going to stop. Now, I don't tithe because I'm obligated to. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a tither because I'm afraid that God might do something to me, you know, harm me in some way. No, I tithe as an honor to God. I, do, I tithe because I want him to know how much I appreciate the fact that he's blessed me and I have money to tithe. So I look at my tithe as a seeding seed and I, I sow it. I don't ever spend it on anything else. I save it for sowing. In fact, I have a tithing account in my checking account and I put my tithes in that checking account and I only use it for sowing uh, into uh, churches, sowing into individuals, sowing into my own church and, and, and ministries that the Lord lays on my heart to sow into. So my tithe is my seeding seed. When I tithe, I, I'm always assured of something in the future coming into my life. I'm never going to be faced with lack or want. Why? Because I'm sowing my seeding seed. So that's what God is saying to Adam and Eve when he created them. I'm giving you seeding seed and for you it shall be for provision. So what did God intend for Adam to do with that seeding seed? Sow it. Sow it. Now in Mark, well, let's go to Genesis chapter 8 before we go to Mark. In Genesis chapter 8, the Bible says, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. In other words, this goes beyond Genesis chapter 1. This goes right into 2023. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. In other words, if God intended for man to have his life sustained by the seeds that he sows in Genesis chapter 1, then he still had still his intention for a man to have his life sustained by the seeds that he sows today. Let that sink in. You have your life sustained by the seeds that you sow today. Don't, any, don't let anybody tell you any different. You have a right to determine your own financial outcome by the seeds that you sow. Amen. Well, we're going to continue this when we come back from the break. I have a special announcement I want you to watch. Look at it, and then we'll be back in just a few moments. What is the purpose of a seed? A seed's primary function, its nature, is to grow, to mature, to reproduce. That's all a seed knows to do. Today's special offer, The Nature of a Seed Special Package, contains Jerry Savelle's inspiring book, Increase God's Way. His mini book, Are You Tired of Sowing Much and Reaping Little? And his eye-opening three-part audio series, How to Bring God's Glory on Your Finances. Discover what's stopping you from receiving a bountiful harvest. In this package, Jerry reveals God's promise to the sower, how prosperity is God's will, why many Christians fail at reaping, and the deception of lack and poverty. Don't delay. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Nature of a Seed special package. Don't settle for a mediocre harvest. Your seeds are meant to grow and multiply. Even in harsh, less than ideal circumstances, your seed will fight to fulfill its purpose. Welcome back. Thank you for watching once again our program today. And let's continue talking about the nature of a seed. Let's go to Mark chapter 4. Now, those of you that watched the broadcast last week, 
You'll notice that I'm reviewing some of the things that we've already talked about, but it's worthy of repeating. In fact, this is how you get it into your heart, get it into your spirit. Don't you remember Jesus said quite frequently, and again, I say unto thee, what was he doing? Repetition is how you get it into your heart. So if you heard it before, then it doesn't hurt to hear it again, okay? So Mark chapter four, and let's look at verse 30. And he said, Wherein to shall we liken to the kingdom of God, or with what comparison shall we compare it? It's like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be sown in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh. Now, you can continue reading that, but I want to emphasize the phrase, when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh. That's the nature of a seed. When it is sown, it groweth up and becometh. Now, remember when we looked at Genesis chapter one, God was telling man that this is how you will have your life sustained by the seeds that you sow. Genesis chapter eight, God said, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. So once again, it's how man was to have his life sustained in Genesis one. And it's also how man is to have his life sustained in 2023. So notice the nature of a seed is once it is sown. Say that with me. Once it is sown. Now, I want to say this to you. Seeds that aren't being sown are seeds that are not growing. Seeds that you aren't sowing are seeds that are not growing. So you have to sow seed if you expect to harvest. I mean, one farmer goes out to the field and says, I never get a harvest. And another farmer comes over and said, did you plant seed? No, I didn't plant seed this year. I planted seeds last year. I planted seed the year before. Well, you're not going to get a harvest this year if you didn't plant seed. So what farmer thinks like that? No farmer thinks like that. And you shouldn't think like that. If you haven't sown seed, then it's your fault. You're not getting a harvest. Now, I know you don't want to hear that, but that's the truth. If you're not receiving a harvest, it's your fault if you're not sowing seed. Because the only way you get a harvest is you sow seed. Once again, Mark chapter 4, Jesus said it. Look at it. It's in red. Like Jesse the planter says, if you can't believe the red, what can you believe? So Jesus said that once the seed is sown, it groweth up and becometh. I, I remember uh, a number of years ago, in fact, over 25 years ago or more, uh, we, we, we were traveling all over the world and uh, establishing churches and Bible schools and and we built orphanages and medical facilities and we were involved in, in uh, humanitarian work and uh, all over the world. We have offices in several different nations. And I've actually preached in 50 different nations uh, personally. And even though our resources are in nations all over the world, but uh, it, it became a, a, a reality to me that if I'm gonna keep traveling all over the world, then I need to start believing for an international aircraft because a lot of the places I would go, the commercial airlines didn't go there. Sometimes I would go as far as I, they could take me. Then I have to rent a car and maybe drive another 200 miles. So eventually I began believing for an international aircraft so that I could travel all over the world and not be dependent upon the commercial airlines. Now, I, I want to make it very clear. I'm not too good to fly on commercial airlines. I've done that. In fact, I have a card from American Airlines that says that I have flown on that one airline 4.5 million miles. So I've flown the commercial airlines. That's just one airline. But over the years, God's blessed our ministry with different aircraft, but none of them were capable because they didn't have the range to take me uh, overseas. I could fly anywhere in the U.S. I could fly to Canada. I could fly to Mexico, but that was about the extent of it. Uh, the longest range that any plane I'd had prior to this was about 1,700 nautical miles. So that won't get you across the oceans, okay? So uh, we began believing for international aircraft. Now, how did I acquire the airplanes that I had owned before? By sowing seed. God told me that I would not be able to fulfill what I was called to do without airplanes in my ministry. So I began sowing seed for them. My first debt-free airplane manifested in 1975, a little Cessna twin engine 310. And it was a good airplane and we flew it for a couple of years 
and then we sowed it. And then we began believing for a bigger, better, and faster airplane. And over a period of time, uh, God had blessed us with nine different airplanes, debt-free, I might add, and, but none of them would take me internationally. And, and, and every time I would outgrow one, I would sow it into another ministry. Why? Because every seed produces after its own kind. If you need apples, then you sow apple seed. If you want cotton, you sow cotton seed. If you need airplanes, you sow airplane seed. And how was I sowing airplane seed? I was sowing either the airplane that I was flying at the time, or I was sowing cash into other ministries that were believing for airplanes. So every airplane I've ever owned in this ministry came by the principle of seed time and harvest. So we began believing God for this international aircraft. Now it didn't come overnight, but I sowed other airplanes as seed for it. I sowed into other ministries for seed for it, uh, for, for a harvest for that airplane. And, and I remember when Brother Copeland was believing for his international aircraft, I sowed seed into that. When Keith Moore was believing for international aircraft, I sowed seed into his ministry. When Jesse DePlantis was believing for uh, international aircraft, I sowed seed into his ministry. What was I doing? I was applying the law of seed time and harvest. Every seed produces after its own kind. Then after 20 years, say 20 years, say it again, 20 years. That sounds like a long time, and yes, it is a long time, but when it happens, you don't think it took 20 years. You're, you're rejoicing in the fact that God made it happen. And, and then it looks like that's the shortest 20 years I've spent in my life. But 20 years later, and in fact, in 2020, right in the middle of a pandemic, right in the middle of this breakout of COVID, right in the middle of the world screaming, worst of times, worst of times, we were having our best of times. And that international aircraft manifested during the pandemic in 2020. It came in November of 2020 and it came debt free, praise God. And I give God all the praise for it. And now I could fly anywhere in the world in our own international aircraft. I was doing what Mark chapter four says. It says, once the seed is sown, it groweth up and become up. See what happened. I sowed my seed and it grew up and it became. What did it become? It became a Falcon 50. Amen. I sowed my seed and it grew up and it became a Falcon 50 that will now take me anywhere in the world. And when I outgrow that one, then I'll do just exactly what I've done with the previous nine airplanes. I outgrew them. I sowed them. If I outgrow this one, I'll sow it. And somebody said, well, what are you believing for next? Well, that's between me and God. But I believe that since it's already happened 10 different times and God is not a man that he should lie and his word does not return void, then one day, if I need a bigger airplane, that bigger airplane will manifest. Why? Because I'm going to keep acting on this same principle. Once the seed is sown, it groweth up and becometh. Amen. Now, to me, that's simple. It's just, it's just a way of life. This is the way I've been living now for 54 years. Now, why aren't you living that way? If you're not, why aren't you living that way? Because this is the way from the very beginning that God intended for man to have his needs met by the seeds that he sows. Do you have needs in your life today? Are you sowing seeds? Are you believing God for something uh, in, your, in your family? Are you believing for a new home? Are you believing for a new automobile? Are you believing something uh, in your ministry? Are you believing for something in your business? Then ask yourself, am I sowing seed toward it? I like what I heard Jesse DePlanis say one time, and I can't improve on it, so I'll just borrow it, and I'll let Jesse know that I borrowed it. He did a lesson one time on name your seed. In other words, whatever you're sowing that seed for, name it. When you release that seed, say, this is seed for this whatever it is that you're believing God for. If you're sowing seed for a new home, then say it, name it. This is my seed for my new home. If you're sowing seed for a new car, then name it. This is my seed for my new car. This is my seed for my business. This is my seed for more sales in my business. This is my seed 
for more people coming to my church. This is my seed for a new building for my church. This is the way you have your life sustained. This way I've been living for 54 years and I'm not going to stop now. Why? Because my mama didn't raise a fool. It's been working for 54 years and it will keep working. Why? Because God's word does not return void. So this is the nature of a seed. Once you learn this, I'm telling you, it becomes a way of life and you're going to see just what I'm talking about, that your quality of life is going to increase to the level that you'll be so glad you learned these principles and you learned how to apply them. So once again, notice that once a seed is sown, what happens to it? Here's the nature of a seed. It grows up and becomes. It grows and becomes. Say that with me. Once I sow my seed, it grows up and it becomes. Hang on to that, praise God. Now, why am I so assured that it will grow and become? Because the Bible says in James chapter 1 and verse 17, speaking of God, it says, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. In other words, God doesn't change his mind. God doesn't say one thing in his word and then he does the opposite. No, he says, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. And there's no variableness in God, neither is there any shadow of turning. The Passion Translation says, it is, he is never subject to change. His word is never subject to change. In Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 17, it says, we're in God willing to show the heirs of promise, the immutability of his counsel. The word immutability means unchangeableness, uh, not capable or susceptible to change. So once God has spoken his word, once he has given his word, then it is not susceptible to change. So when God says, when you plant a seed, it will grow and become, that is not subject to change. Remember Galatians chapter six, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. And he goes on to say, be not deceived. Don't be deceived into, into allowing the devil to convince you God's word doesn't work or allowing some other person uh, or some non-believing believer tell you, well, I tried that and it didn't work. No, God's word works every time it's put to work. And so it is not susceptible to change. Psalm 89, 34 says this, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has come out of my lips. This is covenant with God. God says, I will never break my covenant. And if I set it out of my mouth, then I will never alter what has come from my lips. And then the message translation says, do you think I'd withdraw my holy promise or take back words I've already spoken? Do you think that I would take back my holy promise or take back words that I've already spoken? I say, no, God would never do that. Why? Because God is faithful. God is honorable. God can be depended upon. His word can be depended upon. Listen to this. Deuteronomy chapter seven and verse nine. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God. So what is God telling us? As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And once again, in verse uh, seven down through verse nine of Galatians chapter six, it says that don't allow yourself to become weary in well-doing for if you do not grow weary and if you do not faint, you will reap in due season. So don't give up on your seed. Your seed is working. The soil is working. They know what to do. Do you know what to do? You just keep holding on and trust God, trust his word, and don't let the devil talk you out of your harvest. Amen. Praise God. Watch this, and I'm going to be back in a few moments with some closing remarks. What is the purpose of a seed? A seed's primary function, its nature, is to grow, to mature, to reproduce. That's all a seed knows to do. Today's special offer, The Nature of a Seed Special Package, contains Jerry Savelle's inspiring book, Increase God's Way. His mini book, Are You Tired of Sowing Much and Reaping Little?, and his eye-opening three-part audio series, How to Bring God's Glory on Your Finances. 
Discover what's stopping you from receiving a bountiful harvest. In this package, Jerry reveals God's promise to the sower, how prosperity is God's will, why many Christians fail at reaping, and the deception of lack and poverty. Don't delay. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Nature of a Seed special package. Don't settle for a mediocre harvest. Your seeds are meant to grow and multiply. Even in harsh, less than ideal circumstances, your seed will fight to fulfill its purpose. Once again, thank you for joining me today. It's been a joy sharing the Word of God with you. And listen, if you like what you're hearing and you'd like an in-depth Bible study, don't forget to check out our Jerry Savelle Ministries Correspondent School. It's available to you, and we've got people that are signed up for it all over the world, and we're getting tremendous testimonies from people that are enjoying it, and they're learning, and they're applying it, and they're telling us that it is a valuable course, and they're so glad that they've taken it. So if you'd like more information about the Correspondence course, then go to our website, jerrysavelle.org, and it'll give you all the information. Also, let me remind you of our special resource package, uh, two books and three CDs. One book is entitled Increase God's Way. The principles that I've been sharing with you, they're all in this book, Increase God's Way. God has a plan for you to experience increase. The Bible says that I will increase you, God speaking. I will cause you to increase more and more, you and your children. God wants you to increase, and He has principles that will produce increase in your life. Once you learn them, learn how to apply them, then increase will come your way. Then here's a book that I wrote a number of years ago because I had people say, well, Brother Jerry, I've sown, and I'm not reaping the kind of harvest that the Bible says I'm entitled to reap. So I did an in-depth study and put it in this little book, Are You Tired of Sowing Much and Reaping Little? There are reasons why you're not experiencing the kind of harvest that God's Word says you're entitled to. They're in this book. And if you'd like to understand them, know them, and understand them, then get this little book with this resource package. It'll help you learn what maybe you're doing wrong and how to correct it, and then reap the kind of harvest that God intends for you to reap. And then three CDs, God's Glory on Your Finances. God wants you to experience His presence, his power, and his goodness on your finances. This is Teach You How. Order from jerrysavelle.org. Go to our website and you can get the information on ordering. And I want to encourage you to do it right away while it's fresh on your mind because I know you'll be blessed by these teachings when you get them in the mail. So join me again next week as we continue this study on the nature of a seed. And remember, as we leave today, your faith will overcome the world. 